It's Go Go Media Girl, and I'm at Fireworks Media with Tandy and Zama. Zamo? Zamo. Okay. Um, so, do you guys have different jobs or do the same thing? Um, <laughs> this is a very <laughs> difficult question to answer. <laughs> We kind of have we, we kind of have the same job but different responsibilities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is this is really funny because Zamo is a head writer and the head writer takes control of the whole project. She was head writer on a different project, which was the book end to the project that we're working on here. Yeah. And I was the head writer for this project. But she left that project, so now she's working on my project as a writer. But she's also a script editor, <laughs> and she's a director, and all sorts of other things. So are our responsibilities interchangeable? Yeah. G kind of much. She's writing the script. I kind of wrote the, the whole story, but she can also be a head writer as well. So what's your title? She's head writer, I'm a writer. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it can change. Yeah, but it can change. But we'll it can change. It changes all the time. And Tandy also directs. So that's why I say we kind of have the same job, but different things at different times. And if Zamo came to me and said, I've got this project that she's a head writer on and she wanted me to write, I would say, yeah. yay, yes, absolutely. You're yeah. my boss. I will go and work with you and get some money. Yeah. So we're, we're very, we're not, we don't really have that kind of structure in South Africa. We're much, much more yeah, flexible. It works, yeah. At different times, you're working for someone. At different times, they're working for you. It's, it's always different, yeah. depending on the project. Cool. So what project are you guys doing now? It's called Endgame. It's called Endgame, and it is a political thriller. And it's a very, very complicated political thriller. And we've had, it's, it's been amazing because I've worked with a lot of really good writers like Samuel, but they've all been very strong writers and they've all been head writers in their own right. So we had a whole lot of head writers all going in different directions. And I had to keep on trying to pull them back to the story. And that's kind of what happened with, with uh, Zamo's episode as well, because we had a writer who just couldn't cope and fell out. And I had heard that Zamo had got divorced from her to producer. <laughs> so I called her going, I'm so, she expected me to say sorry. And I said, no, I'm so glad you've just got divorced because I wanted you on this project. So come on in, baby. And so we pulled her into the project and she's been great. But because it's, everybody else has been in the process and we've all been going like this, there were plots, there were plot holes that we actually couldn't see. And Zamo coming in from the outside with having been involved in the project all the way through, so suddenly was going, um, this doesn't make sense. And who is this character? And why is this character? So it was actually, actually, it was like having another script editor there because she was going, hang on guys, hold your horses. This isn't working. And it was great. I'm so glad we've got that on record because I want to be paid for it. <laughs> Not on the SABC budget, yeah, baby. No, it's not going to happen, eh? It's not going to happen. You know that it's not going to happen. Not on the series. <laughs> That's one of the other things about this country as well, is that we do not have the budgets that America has. So, for example, we have put together this series that's really ambitious, very, very big, um, and we have to do it for 10,000 rand a minute. Now, I don't know how good your maths is, but it's really... It's, it's, about, it's nothing. Okay, it's about $1,000 a minute for something that goes out on primetime television. It's got explosions, it's got kidnappings, it's got cyberspace, it's got so many complicated things, and we have to make it work on that budget. So from a writing point of view, that's really challenging, yeah. is that we know, particularly because I'm also a director as well, we know the ramifications of not having a budget. So we have to sit there in our little rooms going, this scene should actually take place there and there, but these are the locations. So funny enough, this scene, for some strange reason, yeah. is going to happen in this location that we've used five times because we know that we can then shoot there all in one day. Yeah. So the writer's responsibilities in terms of that are very big. You don't want to be a writer, do you? Mm. <laughs> what do you want to be? Photographer. Cool. Okay. Anything else you want to ask us? Um, so what skills do you use, like reading, writing, math, la la la? Facebook. Huh? Facebook. Facebook isn't a skill. Facebook is a skill. Knowing how to play on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, look, what we use, gosh, that's an interesting question. Research, you've got to do a lot of research. Yeah. 
people skills. I think this is one of the things that I always say to the sparklers. You know, I say to them, what do writers do? And they all go, they create worlds. They do this. They control reality. And I'm going, no, writers listen. That's exactly what it is. They listen you and they watch listen. people. Yeah, yeah. Because it's... You, you know what, writing is really the art of, <laughs> right? Um, writing is the art of understanding why people do the things that they do. And that's why one of the first things that you have to, the, the, you know, they, they kind of, there are three things that you have to understand as a writer first and foremost, is what's, what's wrong with this character, which what we call a flaw, What's the thing that makes them do things that are bad for them or don't work out for them? Because if your character doesn't have problems, they're not very interesting to watch. And we haven't got a drama. Yeah. So, if you're, so what, what is wrong with this character? Okay. What do they want? And how is this thing going to stop them from getting what they want? And what is it that they actually need? So if you... If you as a writer, you have to spend a lot of time listening to people and understanding why people say and do the things that they do and not taking anything on a surface level. And that's kind of like the, the most important skill of a writer is to, is to understand why people do the things that they do. And it actually makes for... Um it makes for a very difficult time in real life because you tend to look at everybody going, what's your subtext? What is your need? What is your want? What is your flaw? You what's don't your motive? Yeah, what's your motive? You don't mean what you've just said Yeah, there. exactly. But we're generally accurate when it comes to producers because yeah. we know what they need and what they want and what their flaw is. Their flaw is they don't want to pay us. So we know that, but anyhow, and, that's... And some of them don't have souls. Yeah, some of them don't have souls. Yeah. But it's yeah, okay, we, we, we do. <laughs> we okay. souls, but it's good. But, but that is what writers do. You sit there, you look at people, you learn about people, and then hopefully you, you create an interesting character and an interesting story that other people will want to watch and that you really, really, really hope the actors and directors won't mess it up for you. Yeah. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, like, um, with working with guys, is there any competitiveness or anything? As a director, as a, as a female director, um, it's, it's really not easy um, being, being on set. Uh, as a writer, it's, it's a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit easier because, you know, you kind of work in isolation and, and generally, like, even male writers, um, like when you've got a male head writer, they generally are quite emotionally intelligent. So you can kind of, they, they, they can, you can work with them. But on set, um, it's a completely different story um, because um, almost always the assistant director or, or what we call uh, the set manager um, and, the, and the DOP, the director of photography, they're usually male. And they usually immediately assume that they know better than you. And they don't understand that actually um, everything that you do is about people. They think that it's about shots and it's about, <laughs> and it's about uh, you know, making sure everyone is at the right place at the right time. They think that's what being the boss on set is about. Uh, and it's actually, directing has very little to do that. It's, it's all about people. It's all about working with your actors, understanding who they are as people so that you can bring out the right thing from them. Uh, so you get, get the right thing on screen for yourself. And, uh, and that's a very subtle skill, and it's a skill that um, most men on set just do not understand. <laughs> they just don't get it. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think the bigger question is, is that actually um, South Africa is still quite a patriarchal society. And so despite our constitution and despite um, a whole lot of steps that we've made in the right direction, you have a whole lot of men on set who frequently don't believe that women have an opinion and yeah. it's it's quite difficult because to to combat that you have to be quite strong and the stronger you get then of course the more they think that you're a 
a biatch. I don't know how you I'm trying to think of a polite <laughs> word about it. So you have to find a balance between saying, listen, dudes, this is my set. This is what I'm going to do. You are hired to do my job. Let's get on with it. Um, and between being horrible. Yeah. But in a writing team, actually, we find that on the whole, there's no gender issues. There's yeah. nothing like that. It's like everybody just wants to get the best script the out there. Yeah. So yeah. not in writing. On set, slightly different. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> what tips would you have for somebody who wants to become a director? Don't do it. Um, <laughs> no, no, not even so much don't do it. Um, but um, I, I don't know if what tip I would have for, for other people. What I can speak about is my experience. And one of the things that I always wish I hadn't done is that I wish I hadn't established myself so strongly as a writer because it's so difficult to get people to understand that you actually do both you want to do both you're not doing you're not directing because it's kind of fun and it's you're kind of like just playing around <laughs> you know um, you actually are pretty good at it you know how to do it you want to do it you're interested in doing it so I would say like one of the most important things if you want to be a director is to is to start early start early because also directing is the most wonderful thing about directing is that you learn something every single time so the earlier you start the more skills you've got in your bag of tricks so yeah start early what she said um, <laughs> but also I think as well I would say to anybody who wanted to direct crew your way up Seriously, just get onto set, mm -hmm. be a runner, learn about every single department because there will always come a moment in any production where you haven't got the budget and if you have worked your way up through the, through the ranks, mm -hmm. you know that that rain scene does not require 20,000 rounds worth of equipment. Just get a hose, stick it up there and do it because you've been and art department. <laughs> yeah. and, you've, and you've been art department so you know how to do it. And because frequently crew will say no that can't happen no that can't happen yeah. if however you've done everything you go dudes this is how it goes Polly over there that there boom let's go and it really yeah. helps it helps if you actually yeah. know your stuff and it also means you understand the demands of every department and because every department has its own things and mm -hmm. you can understand why makeup needs that and wardrobe needs that and that one needs that time and also it helps a lot and this sounds stupid, but if you have acted, because if you as a director have gone into those auditions as an actor and been rejected, you understand the absolute terror that it is for an actor. Yeah. And so you can draw that out of them and you can work with them better. I find that directors who have not acted themselves are very unsympathetic to actors. They don't yeah. understand that thing of how you reveal yourself yeah. and how, mm -hmm. how scary it is mm -hmm. to actually open yourself in that way. And it requires huge trust between the actor and the director and the crew to get there. And as a director, if you're all about the shots and all about this, you won't get the performances. And quite frankly, the shots are lovely. They're great. But if you haven't got a story with people and emotions, you're not going to have an audience. Yeah. So it's about that, I'd say. Okay. Well, that was Tani oh, Ty and Zamo. Um, at Fireworks Media and Go Go Media Girl.